Welcome back to Nigeria 2015. Don't forget, you can send us your email, questions, or comments. You can also tweet at us. I mean, there's a big meeting which is going to hold tomorrow. You can tell us, hashtag, no election postponement, or yes, election postponement, at those Twitter handles you see on the screen. Remember to use the hashtag, Nigeria 2015. Well, remember that uh, it wasn't long ago that the EU also did speak about uh, sending observers to the northeast region. We have now joining us via Skype from Abuja, Michelle Arian, the head of the EU delegation to Nigeria. Good evening and thank you for joining us today. What's your impression about uh, our preparations for the elections? I mean, you see all the discussions going on, whether or not it should hold or be postponed, and the reasons that different parties and schools of thought are given for their argument? Well, um, the, first, the first thing I would like to, to, to say is certainly that we, we fully trust the um, Electoral Commission. I think it is a very professional, very competent, and above all, very um, independent uh, institution. Uh, and I, I must say the uh, the Nigerians uh, must, can really rely on this uh, institution. That's quite important for the Nigerians that, who are listening to us. It's not everywhere like that in Africa. So um, I would say, uh, as far as the EU is concerned, we fully trust the, the Commission and we will um, certainly um, rely on, on their judgment. Um, indeed, uh, we are watching closely uh, the whole process. Uh, a few um, EU observers have uh, arrived in, um, in Abuja and uh, all across uh, the country. Um, there are some difficulties, um, either mainly security linked or uh, more technical uh, in, uh, with regard in particular the distribution of the voters card. And we believe that it's a, it's a good thing that the um, Electoral Commission tomorrow will engage with the other political actors. Um, because one should not be mistaken, indeed, INEC is uh, competent and, and uh, fully responsible for uh, delivering good elections, but it's not solely responsible. I mean, there are other uh, stakeholders that should share this responsibility, and in particular, um, all authorities, either at federal or at uh, local level, or the political parties, so they are all together, the entire political, the body politic, is to deliver credible elections. So it's very good that they discuss, and we hope they will agree um, a solution, and we will certainly uh, align ourselves, uh, certainly we, there is no other uh, alternative, we will align ourselves to, the, um, to INEC. Mr. Arian, could you tell us, because I mean, uh, sometimes our cameras see your, some of your members in the field, what is it that you've noticed with respect to the distribution of the permanent voter cards? Well, we are indeed receiving uh, reports uh, from, we have actually, we have 15 teams all over the country. Um, those teams are looking at the um, preparation to the elections. Um, they work uh, closely with the uh, INEC staff and also with the civil society. Uh, the information they collect uh, um, shows that the, proce the process is going uh, reasonably well. Um, indeed, we uh, are also collecting uh, from other informants, in particular from uh, civil society and other um, uh, NGOs and um, uh, organizations. Um, we, we see that the, the distribution is taking place. We see that the, every day we see an improvement in, in the figures and in the numbers of uh, the cards that are distributed, so we remain quite confident. It's a good thing that the period to, um, to collect the, the card has been extended until the very last moment. We think it's very good. It's good also that some local authorities has, have taken on board the responsibility of uh, making sure that the cards are distributed or are available at a lower level than the, than the LGA, at, at ward level, uh, right. if not at polling station level. So everybody taking is part of the, of 
part of the okay. burden and of the responsibility is, is very good. So we remain reasonably um, optimistic. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Michel Arian, the head of the EU delegation to Nigeria. Well, we're moving on now with uh, all the schedule today. Well, yes, we also have uh, Mr. Dele Alake, who is Director of Strategy for Bori Campaign Organization. He joins us via phone this evening on Nigeria 2015. Good evening, Mr. Alake, and thank you for joining us. With respect to the uh, Council of States meeting, I mean, your party always uh, has supported the elections proceeding as scheduled. Now that uh, INEC has scheduled a meeting tomorrow to eventually, uh, they will hold this press conference and brief the country on what they have decided. What's your impression of what's going on so far about the elections holding as scheduled? Well, uh, thank you for having me on. I think uh, the Council of State did the right thing by uh, uh, letting INEC take full responsibility for the conduct of that election, of the forthcoming election, because that is INEC's constitutional responsibility. And the National Council of State, as you all know, is an advisory body. It has no constitutional authority to, to shift election or, or to copy date short in any, in any form. And I think that this is the first time really in, in contemporary history that you will have the establishment, the ruling party, the government uh, in, in office really advocating for a shift in the uh, election dates, simply because it has dawned on the government that it has lost, you know, public opinion, it has lost the election even before it's taken place. I do not see, normally in other clans, even in Nigeria in the past, it used to be the opposition that would be clamoring for, for a shift in the election dates, but this time around, it's the establishment. That, that really is significant. Secondly, is the fact that even if you look at the distribution of the PVC, um, uh, we are told by INEC that about 68% has been achieved. 68% uh, distribution of PVC has been achieved. And that is really so substantial compliance. And in any, in any environment, in any society, 68 is not a failure. Uh, you know, it, it's a pass mark. And in any case, even if PVCs were, were to be 100% distributed, we all also know that not 100% of eligible voters do come out to vote on the day of election. And number three, on the issue of security uh, in, in those parts, in the northeastern part of the country. Now, let us examine it critically. If in the last couple of years, the, the, the Nigerian government has been unable to contain Boko Haram in the northeastern part. How long will the shift in the election date enable it to now contain the Boko Haram uh, to ensure that everybody has access to, to voting on the day of election? So even as it is now, even if elections were to be shifted to next year, there is no guarantee that uh, the, Nigerian, the current Nigerian dispensation can contain Boko Haram and uh, drive them out of those, those uh, uh, conquered territories, as it were, and enable the people there to vote. So the two counts of PVC distribution and the security uh, concern in the northeastern part of Nigeria are not really weighty enough to shift the election or to postpone the election date. Not at all. All right, then. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Adele Alake, Director Strategy for Bari Campaign Organization. He's given us his perspective on what he thinks about the elections. Well, let me get to uh, Mr. Mecca Ngige, uh, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Well, both of them cited different uh, reasons uh, why they think the election should go on or not. But the point that he spoke about, that look, even if they say based on security issues, and how long? Will INEC, or how long, or does that mean that if the elections, assuming they were shifted owing to security concerns in the Northeast, would they be able to contain them, and how long would that be that will be tenable to Nigerians? I think Mr. Aleke hit the point. Because uh, if you use security reason to postpone by end of this year, you know, nobody is sure that they'll be able to contain uh, Boko Haram. But the point I want to also make on this uh, issue of security is that 
from what the National Security Advisor has said, the security challenge is restricted to 14 local governments across, that is the Northeast. We have 774 local governments in Nigeria. So can you, because of uh, 14 local governments, postpone election when you have 774 local governments? Would it be legally tenable if uh, they say, OK, well, for those local governments that will have the security challenge, we will move the elections there for a bit and then go on with other states as scheduled, citing or predicating it on Section 26? That's what 26.1 is all about. You hold the election where there is uh, no mercy. Then in the area where there is a challenge, either to security or uh, other natural emergencies, you postpone that election to another date. And if you are still unable to conduct the election in that area at the postponed date, you now compare the number of registered voters in that area under threat vis-a-vis -vis the areas where the election had been held. And if the number is infinitesimal, if it's 2% of the electorate in Nigeria, you go ahead and declare the result. Okay, well, uh, some people also tweeting, we did ask for your comments. Gabriel Jerry thinks that the meeting that Anik has scheduled tomorrow is, in his word, totally uncalled for. Well, uh, you also have um, Adebayo Sunday. No, he didn't say much of this, but uh, Siku talking about uh, no to election postponements. And then we'll have uh, Muiwa who says yes to election postponement because they haven't gotten their permanent voter cards yet. And then that's how the opinions are. So I'm also saying, look, I've not collected my PVC because it was not found. What do I do? That's Osayende Onyinye. So the comments just keep making uh, the rounds and they're coming in thick and fast. But that's where we have to uh, draw the curtains today on the program. I have to thank you, Mr. Mekan Ngige, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, for coming on today. Thank you so much. And then we also thank our guest, uh, Dilia Lake, is the Director of Strategy. He joined us via phone, uh, Director of Strategy for Bori Campaign Organization. We also did have Mr. Ishola Filani, a member of the PDP, who joined us from our studios in Abuja, and Michelle Arion, head of the EU delegation to Nigeria who joined us via Skype also from Abuja. We also thank you for letting us be a part of your day today. We hope that you join us again next time. From all of us here, good night.